Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross and today I'm going to do another one of my retrospective looks at codexes with an 8th edition. Today I'm going to have a look at Death Guards, uh, sort of one of the starting factions for 8th edition, bringing in all their plaguey ways. Now, I am going to focus primarily on the codex, not really going to focus on War of the Spider, uh, mainly because one, uh, we didn't really play much of it. It came in so late to 8th edition that, let's face it, only a couple of months in, so we didn't see much of it. And personally, I also like to focus on the codex itself, because that's sort of the core of the rules, and I want to see where that needs to be, you know, updated, the strengths and weaknesses of the codex, rather than trying to look at the expansions, etc. Just focus on that, and really see to the nitty gritty what it was there. So... Let's have a look at the Death Guards. Death Guards were the slimy new lads on the block, sporting a new models all over the shop and a demon Primark to boot. These guys were the start of the great 8th edition, 8th edition invasion of Chaos after Arcadia. How this all worked out is for, you know, another time to discuss, but for, you know, and how well that worked is maybe, you know, another video for another time. But we want to have a look at Death Guard and how they worked realistically on the tabletop, and that's what I'm here to discuss. So, Mortarian proved to be a tank at the begin beginning, and it could, you know, be devastating to a degree. Bloated, flight, uh, bloated drones were great, they were a bright note. However, it quickly became apparent that Plague Marines were vastly overpointed. I think they even got a price drop from their index entry, they then brought out the codex and then they already had a price drop, I could be wrong on that one. And then a further price drop again when it came to chapter approved. This is all to say that Death Guard, you know, suffered in late stage 8th edition uh, for being one of the first codexes similar to Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines and Grey Knights. Basically they had first codex problems. Uh, so first we're going to have a look at the universal rules. Now, a few of these are going to be taken straight from the Chaos Space Marine Codex, because I've already done that when I've talked a lot about, about these rules. So I think that's fine. Uh, they more or less cover the same as that one. These are going to be Death of the False Emperor and Demonic Ritual, and I'll cover them quickly. So Death of the False Emperor, I mentioned a few times, is actually a rule that many armies would love, minus the obvious caveat. Uh, Tyranid and Orcs, etc., they would love this. Uh, combat is what's written for Chaos Space Marines. But how well they do it is debatable. Uh, there is some great combinations, don't get me wrong, Mortarian and Demon, uh, Demon Prince. They obviously come off as a highlight when it comes to the Death of False Emperor. Uh, however, having the Imperium keyword restriction is not ideal. Plenty of units and armies have the Imperium keyword, I won't list them all. But Xenos and Chaos players instantly just throw this rule out the window because if you're facing against them then that's a whole rule kind of already lost. Uh, which is not ideal. Very few forces have this restriction. Even Death Guard's special ammo does not need to be used uh, against Xenos, which means that that rule is useful in just about all games. Though, at uh, the point of filming this, so there was rumour that's going around that Death Watch are going to get reroll one step on Xenos units in general or something like that, I'm not too sure. Uh, on top of it, don't quote me there. But, you know, as a, a fundamental foundation rule, similar to, I think, is it... Uh, combat doctrines for like space means, so that could be the whole army sort of one. Uh, it just does, something just doesn't gel with me on this one. It's, it's so restrictive to an army you're playing against that a rule that you lose out on because you're not facing against it. I mentioned that I wanted these to be more reflected on Marks of Chaos. Uh, I won't go into it specifically, but basically if you are like Mark of Corn, then you get a bonus, Mark of Nuggle, you get a bonus that bonus should then go into Death Guard because they're going to be all Mark of Nuggle. I just feel Death to the False Emperor is cool, but it's restrictive. And let's face it, Chaos don't do the best in combat in some degrees, so I would personally prefer it to be in the Chaos Spaceman Codex. It was, I suggested different marks and give you different buffs. Uh, for Death Guard, it would just be a straight different buff. I don't know what it would be, but I'm just a bit, uh, a bit shaken Death to the False Emperor. Then we have Demonic Ritual. This one is terrible. Uh, where summoning was a big part of 7th edition, is arguably, and arguably it was a problem in 7th edition, it was maybe a little bit too good. In this edition it's all but pointless. It costs points, there's no certainty it'll work how you plan, 
and it, you know it it could be good you know you know if you have a smart player then yeah they can walk around it but it's just not reliable. I think the Death Guard is actually one of the better ones because you can summon and play bearers, which are actually quite good. But uh, it's just seemed to be, you know, you're better off just planning your points to the army you want rather than trying to summon. And if it all goes wrong, it all goes wrong. So I'm kind of thinking that just like Demonic Ritual, I've, Ritual I've said, for, it needs to be rethought from the ground up. This is for all Chaos Forces. I'm looking at Chaos Demons in specific. Uh, that one really needs to be addressed, just overall. It's a hard one to balance, similar to Reanimation Protocols, it's getting models back into a balanced point. We've had it almost too good in 7th edition, both Reanimation Protocol and Summoning, getting these free models, it became a little bit ridiculous at points. But now they've tried to bring it back on these side and it's not really worked out to agree, certainly when it comes to demonic rituals. Uh, we've then got Discussing Resilient, a great rule, more or less shared within the Codex, probably better in 7th edition rather than 8th edition because the multiple damage parts sort of hurts it. I think GW sort of wrote this to make it equal to Primaris' two wounds, and let's face it, it is not. Uh, on some of the bigger units with huge wound pools, you know, you're looking at your Demon Engines, uh, your Plague Crawler, etc., then yeah, it actually works out quite well. But, you know, single wound stuff like Prey Wounds, Pox Walkers, it's just not as helpful. Uh, I think it, you know, generally is universally agreed, I hope, the Plague Marines should be two woods. Plague Weapons, actually really good. Would be nice that, you know, on Bolters, let's face it, without an AP, Bolter rounds just bounce off everything. Uh, I would ask if they would add this to Bolters or even have a character would do that. It'd be excellent. Uh, I think there's some new stratagems that does allow that uh, within War of the Spider. Also, if you can make it that the Plague Weapons in general on unmodified rolls of 6 or maybe like high AP or something, but that might be a little bit too much to demand. But basically, we know that Bolter Fire is, you know, old school Bolter Fire. Obviously, we have the Primaris with their stupid AP stuff, like they can get ridiculous. It's not easy for the Chaos Bros, and I think it really hurts them. So, I, I, I generally think that Bolter Fire maybe. Maybe it'd be too much to ask for Bolt Fire that on unmodified rolls of uh, wound rolls of six is that they explode because that's kind of like how the firepower works. Maybe there should be a higher AP. Maybe that's too much because arguably you'd have to give that space wounds well, and oh, you know, people might not be happy on that one. But uh, general ones without AP, they're just not doing the damage. Uh, if they're given plague, that would significantly help. But it is an area that does need to be addressed. Then we have Inexorable Advance, frankly almost laughable now. With the addition of Bolter Discipline, it hurt this pretty hard with the, you know, heavy, you know, when you're doing the rapid firing, if you just stay still, then you just ignore this. If you move forward, you get an extra six inches. Fine. Uh, the heavy part only affects Hellbrutes and the Blight Lord with the Aut Cannon, and I think Cultus with uh, the Heavy Stubber. Generally, Death Guard on their infantry don't have that many uh, heavy weapons. I think as we go into 9th, that Hellbrute part, it's already solved. So I think it really needs to be addressed that side. The advanced side is not bad, but you don't have whole units of advanced uh, weapons. So you've got uh, your Blight Launcher, which, yeah, you can advance the Plague Marine unit, but you're giving up the Bolter of Fire. I think an exorbitant advance does need to be addressed, or new units need to be added to certainly take more benefit from it. Overall, especially going into 9th, as I said, major rethink on most of these parts, I think, need to be done. Well, a trait this section has held up more than any other really war traits. Well, there's some that do much better. However, there's far too much focus on survival, meaning we sort of de facto choose whichever one we want best out of the survival ones. When they're all survival, which one is best? Choose that. Not much variety. However, where there is one that is actually not survival and actually is very good is, of course, Arch Contaminator, which has done very well for me. So, you know, you've got Arch Contaminator, you know, it's funny, all the survival ones, and yeah, Arch Contaminator is usually the go-to, but obviously we have now ways to get more Warlord traits. I think War of the Spider gives you that. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but most factions got it. And I just feel there needs to be a little bit more variety in the Warlord traits there. If I was to replace any, because I always like to mention maybe ones I'd replace, it would be Living Plague. 
needs to be, you know, needs to be close range and only a single mortal wound on every unit within three inches for a single mortal wound on a four plus. It has a very, very small range and a low amount of mortal wounds. If I would say maybe six inches and on a two plus, there's a mortal wound with six as being D3 mortal wounds. That would be a lot more dangerous. After all, getting a death guard within six inches is sometimes difficult uh, and it'd be nice to be plaguey. When you see a death guard, there's a lot of this of, you know, mortal wounds to units around them. Which is nice in probably games of like 3,000 plus, but in the average game, you're not going to have that many nearby to actually get the full warrant of this. So, uh, I just feel that needs to be a little bit more devastating in a way. Then we have one which is Hulking Physique, plus one toughness. What other traits have simply got better than that? Look at like the uh, Chaos Space Marines, uh, Faith and Fury. There's a lot better ones that just like plus one toughness. There's ones that add on so much more stats than that. Plus one toughness, plus one wounds might be better, but basically plus one toughness, one stat advance, no ideal. We've we've seen a lot more than that uh, as Codex have gone on. Stratagems. So, 14 stratagems to choose from. Oh, I see what you did there. However, on a serious note, Space Marines have, now they did get a new Codex, 34 generic ones and roughly 16 each of their supplements. Yes, even their supplements got more. Uh, you did get a lot more, and of course, War of the Spider. Uh, but that came so late in the game, <laughs> it was a bit difficult on that one. There are some good ones here with some clever tricks you can do. Cloud of Flies, Putrid Detonation, uh, Blight Bombardment, of course, Vets of the Long War, all do well. Uh, but this needs, you know, this needs to have a few from the Chaos Codex, specifically Demon Forge, for instance. That would have been a great help. Uh, but an update is needed to the stratagems, I feel. I like to mention those that need to go from 9th edition or they need to get radically changed up. Nurgle Draw, I actually like this a lot. Maybe have these in brackets. So what I mean, instead of being 3 command points, very expensive, it does stuff. 1 command point, it affects D3 units of your choice. 2 command points, it affects D6. Uh, three, 3 command points, affects all. That may be a little bit too much, but honestly, I don't think so. Uh, I hate these one command points cause D3 mortal wounds. I find them very lackluster. That's why I'm saying it should affect D3 units because then you might get more. Uh, at the moment, it can be devastating, but like I said, a lot of Death Guard abilities and huge games, great. Average games, not so good. Grandfather's Blessing, I've talked about these D3 mortal wounds bring back. They're a bit expensive, need to be one command point, and they need to affect Team Princes and Vehicles and probably more Tyrant. I think it's just infantry right now. So that needs to be cheaper and it needs to affect more units. The Dead Walk again used to be great, but reinforcements have made this tricky. Here's my take. One command point and D6 Pox Walkers return on every Pox Walker unit. Let's face it, Pox Walkers are not breaking the game. I agree with it not going above 20 in the unit, but it's a good way to regenerate. Maybe one command point for one unit, two to affect all of them. I don't know how you balance that one, but, you know, it's Pox Walkers. You're not returning Terminators, like... It's not even close to or anything that you want to see. I don't know, you're not returning paladins or anything like that. You know, it's just pox walkers. It can be cheap and you get a few back, great. I don't think it needs to be expensive. I think it just needs to be better. Uh, play packed, summoning is a problem, fix it. Simple as. Relics, most of the standard ones codex are showing their age and of very little use. This is just, again, part of being an older codex. The main one here is super Supperating Plate on a Demon Prince. Honestly, hard not to recommend this one with a Demon Prince, a must-have every time. Now, I will mention that a few of the War Spider ones are actually pretty nice. Again, the Putrid Percept on Demon Prince can do well. Demon's Tall to buff Poxwalkers, etc. Uh, also on codexes that need to go, Pandemic Stave. There have been bare versions of this now, but versus the Putrid Percept, it uh, loses out. Uh, Dolores Nell, again, low mortal wound and exploit morale, not so good. Also, chucking the Fulgris Helm, I know that adding 3 inches to aura abilities, that was quite common in areas. I don't really rate it so much, you know, 3 inches is kind of okay, but not great. Uh, 10 inch aura, but pff, nah, I think there's better stuff that can be had with when it comes to aura abilities. Maybe that, you know, you get to elect a unit within 18 inches, so instead of it being an extra 3 inches, 
it does six inches and you can pass your buff to unit within 18 inches that actually might be quite good uh, didn't write that down off the top of my head uh, let me know I, I think that would also work for other codex as well I think that'd be a lot more uh, usable psychic abilities actually all in you know this area are pretty strong for death guards now it would be nice to have dark Ereticus, you know from what time would be a huge advantage for mortarion I know that was very early that people were just going right I'm just gonna take up chaos space Marine detachment chaos sorcerer don't need to worry about that and then fling mortarion up the field uh, but you know that doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that Death Guard don't have anything in their current roster. Uh, Miasma Pestilence is good. Protrulescent Vitality with Typhus and Poxwalkers is excellent. Blade Putrefaction can make Demon Prince and Mortarion devastating. Seriously, I destroyed Custodial Bikes like No Tomorrow with Mortarion and a bunch of combinations from that. It was glorious. Uh, but there's not to say there needs to be a little rethink in this one. So, Gift Contagion. A non-reliable debuff uh, at warp charge 7, it's rough. Lower it to 6 and worth considering, but overall not great because it is not dependent. Frankly, I'd say if it's going to be 7, you get to elect what that debuff is, you know, because 7 is not the easiest to cast. Even at 6, I would still say you get to elect the debuff uh, just to make it reliable. Curse of Leper, again... A high bit at 7 to cast, but I get it, it's Nurgle's number. Exce I hope it is Nurgle's number, and I'm just getting this ridiculous wrong, I'm pretty sure it is, I'm like 99.999%. Exceedingly tough, or otherwise all these sort of 14 stratagems casting in 7 seems really odd. Uh, exceeding toughness, of to uh, exceeding toughness, toughness 4 can be difficult, it's only 5s and 6s. And even, if, even toughness 3, stuff is only mort mortal wounded 3.5 times. And if it's toughness 3, then 3.5 mortal wounds is probably fine. You're probably not worried about it. So I think it's one that uh, can do a couple more wounds, but generally for its casting power, not reliable. And even when it's like high, if it's higher toughness stuff, it's just not even worth thinking about. So again, I think that one needs to go and definitely needs a bit of a rethink. Summary of these parts, funny thing is, unlike some other codecs, the Warlord traits and psychic abilities are actually not bad, they've held up uh, to a degree, but there is still work to be done. Legion trait does need to change, no questions in that one, you can fight me on that, but I think it needs to change badly. Stratagems, I get the theme of 7, and psychic waning did help a lot there, but it did hurt Death Guard against such a limited amount. Simply put, curse of an early codex. However, now we have come to solve what I consider the real problem, which is the Death Card roster. Looking at the roster, this is a tough one as Death Card actually have a fair bit of unit selection to choose from. 33 units to choose from, which overall is not bad. Some armies will look upon that with envy, but the devil is in the detail, they say. So of these 33, 14 of those are character models. That's over a third. And even then, there's also like a further four of those 33 are demons. And let's face it, if you're taking these demons, you know, your nurglings and your play bearers, you're going to take them in a de demon detachment because they cancel out illusion tree, which is not ideal. And frankly, unless that you know this fix, they shouldn't even appear in the codex. If they can get a legion rule, probably ship them out. Uh, I don't really agree with them being here. Uh, I personally believe that chaos space marines shouldn't really have demons in their army. Now, when you just explain my theory on this one, is basically if you have chaos space marines, I'd love to see more of them. Uh, demons, pure demons in their codex, and then if you've got your demon kin codex, which be the equivalent of, say, Adeptus Sororitas in terms of, like, faith and stuff. Like, you know, try to think of, like, equivalents. If demons were Ash Militarum, then demon kin would be Adeptus Sororitas or something. Point of matter is that I'd love to see, like, a demon kin codex. You've got it with Shadow Spear and to a degree, which have your Blair Rares and stuff in it. But I can accept them partly being the Chaos Space Marine codex. Uh, because the Blair Rares are awesome in Chaos Spaceman Codex. I just don't like the Helldrake, to be honest. I complain about that enough. I don't believe it is a Chaos Spaceman weapon. It's part demon, part chaos. Demon can. But that's my view on that one. Ranting away from there. Um, so, uh, lastly, there is also... Eight of those 33 are vehicles, to some degree. Many of them being demon vehicles. So with all this kind of said and done, there's only like seven infantry to choose from, which is actually, it's pretty cool, seven infantry stuff, like units. 
two types of infantry, the reliable, you know, the two types of infantry, the reliable plague marines, you know, you've got them, that's your plague marines, and then if more plague marines is like the possessed demonkin, that's like the other variant of plague marines. Uh, my point, uh, you know, and then you've also got, I suppose, your terminators as well, cultists, but uh, plague marines, you know, we'll go into that, you know, it'd be nice to have like havoc plague marines, that'd be good. My point is that using especially characters as fillers, and I'm I'm kind of against demon engines as well, filling up a Chaos Codex. Though the ones in Chaos Demons do, uh, sorry, in Death Guard, do feel like Death Guard demon engines, like the Bloat Drone and the uh, Plague Crawler, they do feel like them, but I just wish there was a bit more Plague Marines, is the way I'd want to put it. I just want to see more Plague Marines. So before solutions, you know, that we can maybe add to try and amend this in some way, uh, I'm going to go over the roster just in terms of the, each of their sections and strengths and weaknesses. So special characters, so we of course have the Death Guard Big 2, Typhus and Mortarion. There is the Forge World one as well, but again I'm focusing on the Codex. Typhus is excellent buff for Poxwalkers and a source of psychic potential. In combat is also not bad, not reaching that deadly strength 8 I feel is kind of acceptable. Again, everyone's strength 8 is just ridiculous, so being strength 7 I can accept. I like, uh, I would like his... You know, impact, you know, I like his like disgusting resilient, maybe be impactful more, maybe buff it, but maybe other units should do that, like the Plague Surgeon. He is, of course, however, super slow, which uh, making moving him quite difficult. Uh, I hate Nurgle's gift, I get it, it's, you know, it's pretty interesting, but it's just different to wield. 7 inch aura that gives your units then an aura ability to then affect other units. Blah, blah, blah. It's a bit messy and it only causes like a single mortal wound. It's not great overall as a as a, an ability. Uh, maybe if you're playing again 3000 points, but in this edition it's it's not working out as well, I feel. Uh, I often forget about it because it's just not affecting that many games. Uh, Big Bad Mortarion, War Champion, Silence is awesome no matter how you swig it, pun intended. With Death to the False Emperor, uh, it can get actually crazy. I know I slayed to Death to the False Emperor earlier. I killed Custodias with it and a bunch of buffs. I did some tricks with it. I swung at single ones, got loads of extra hits. And then I swung at Heavy Hitter, right? I did that. Uh, and I slayed to Death to the False Emperor. I stand by my opinion, Death to the False Emperor. Rerolling the hit, roll, uh, hit rolls of one for friendly Death Guard units? No, he is a Primarch of his chapter. You know, it should be all hits fitting a Primarch or a Chapter Master, it's kind of their stick. it should be re-rolling all hits. I also believe, uh, you know, it does need to be a bit more resilient. Toughness 8 does not seem like such an ask when Knights are getting it, uh, it doesn't seem like such a stretch. He may be having discussing resilient, uh, but as 8th is probably true, uh, proved, that's not quite tough enough. Magnus can be more difficult to bring down after psychic abilities, which is kind of fine, that's his store shit stick, you know, bring in psychic abilities, survive, I get it, once he buffs himself up with psychic abilities. Mortarion should be a lot more difficult to bring uh, down onto, you know, just from the get-go. I think Toughness 8 is not a hard ask. Maybe I'm wrong on that one, but I think it's probably about right. Then his aura abilities, Toxic Presence, I think actually all around is fine, no problems really with that one. Host of Plays in the hands, well in most games this will probably affect 3 or 4 units, uh, really. I think this should be activated on a 2, 3, 4, rather than I think it's 4, 5, 6, I think. Uh, and unmodified rule of 6 is D6 mortal wounds. I say this because it can be good, but more than not, it's just kind of mediocre. Magnus has his stair smite, which can do D6 mortal wounds, and if you get 10, it's 2 D6 mortal wounds, and, it's, uh, and it also gets modified by his buff, so it makes it very, very easy for him to throw out mortal wounds. Mortarian, it's just a bit unwieldy, it's unreliable and not quite effective enough. I feel if you're taking a Demon Primarch, it should be a lot more effective for that sort of aura ability. HQ, Demon Primarch, uh, Primar uh, Demon, Primar Demon Prince is all, all uh, absolutely solid, can't go wrong with the Demon Prince. Lord of Contagion, I love the model, overall awesome, however it's slow and it hurts. Also I mentioned Nurgle's Gift, it's a bit unwieldy, uh, it doesn't do as much as we'd hoped. Versus the standard reroll ones, it's hard to justify. Maybe a version where you can launch it 21 inches at a single unit, or explode 7 inch aura, maybe justifiable. But reroll ones, 
tend to still be far more reliable. Standard Chaos Lord does Chaos Lord things, i.e. offer that uh, reroll, just doesn't get disgusting resilient. Chaos Sorcerer does Chaos Sorcerer things, uh, oh, if only you had Dark Hereticus. Just give it Disgusting Resilient, but in general with Demon Prince, Typhus, Mortarion, it's hard to justify them if you're really looking for psychic abilities. Finally, my, uh, Malignant Playcaster, because it couldn't just be a Sorcerer. Oh no, but with that extra 7 inch ability, let's face it, Sorcerers really don't want to be within 7 inches of an opponent. I suppose they can be. But uh, this should be, again, 21 inches. You know, I'm going to send 14, 21. Maybe you want to say 14, that would be fine as well. And then it's acceptable. But really, even with this, only 5 points over a standard uh, Sorcerer, I think, is a bit more at the moment. And I can't remember the points for 9th at the moment uh, of what it is. But it shouldn't be that much more than a Sorcerer, because all you're getting is that extra ability. Troops. Now, 5 choices here, which sounds awesome. But let's discount play bears and darklings already. They disrupt your detachment bonus. Not that I'm a big fan of the detachment bonus for Death Guard. So off they go to the Demon Codex. Chaos Cultists are just kind of standard cheap. Pox Walkers are excellent. Maybe a little bit too expensive and could really have done with like a 6 up save or something to top them up. I get disgust and resilient, but they're still very, very squishy. And they're slow. Psychic Awakening did give them their ability, a new lease of life, because they could deep strike in, which they badly needed to come out of the ground. Because if you walk them across the field, let's face it, you're just practicing, you know, shooting fish in a barrel there because they'll just walk up so slowly. Play Marines, and that's the big one, with a day sheet bigger than just about any unit in the game. Like, it takes up a whole page and it is full. Plenty of options here, but sadly they just kind of don't hit the mark. Pure bulk on fire, and I mean old school bolt, you know, bolt rounds. Let's face it, it's just terrible in this edition. Honestly, to maybe make Bolter's Fire, maybe, as I said, unmodified rolls or wound rolls of 6. AP minus 4. After all, they are exploding rounds, I believe. Make their Bolter's Plague, then maybe on something, but again, I might be a little bit too much to, to ask for. Combat stuff is hard to justify, but now with Hateful Assault, it really does make it interesting to say at least Flail of, Cor of Corruption becomes very interesting when you're swinging, I think, two attacks. That's 2d3 attacks with uh, a single one of them. That can hurt. Great Plague Cleaver, well, not so much. Model looks amazing, but just wish, like, you know, the unit champion could have either one of these. Basically, there's potential in the combat side. Kind of need two wounds. Uh, however, simply put, you know, as I said, name two wounds. It makes them so much better, I believe almost all marines should actually be two wounds. Look at Admech stuff, the riding mechanical horses have three wounds in their new unit, and their drop troops, the one with the massive wings, are two wounds. How do they have more wounds than a raptor or like your basic marine? Even if you have to make Primaris three wounds, like, fine, but I believe all marines should be two wounds. Plague marines, maybe they should get three then. Maybe that's a bit much. Uh, Marines should be able to take a few more wounds than a standard guardsman or a Tau strike team or anything like that. Like, that's their stick. They're a bit more tougher, and I think the wound count needs to reflect that. We're now seeing now a lot more strange units getting more wounds. Maybe their Marines could do with that themselves. So yeah, plenty of options and toys. They just don't hit hard enough, and you don't even survive that well, which is Death Guard's thing. There is a reason why Plague Marines got such a hefty point reduction. Elite Choices, a busy section here for a few options, but this came with five sport characters, becoming a hot common thing in 8th edition, and honestly, I don't like it too much. Saw a lot in Adeptus Sororitas as well, sometimes they're useful, sometimes they're not, I'm talking about the characters. Uh, I often get into trouble for not bringing a foul blight spawn, honestly, I don't blame people for getting me into trouble on it. It does do well for its points, and if it gets there, it does well, fair enough. Uh, the Bog Biologus Putrefier, yep, can be excellent, can be great with some stratagem upgrades, but it's just so difficult to pull off. See, if there was like range grenade things for Plague Marines, then this would be like, you know, the Primaris have, then yeah, there might be some really good stuff in here. There is a trick, it's just became really hard to pull off. Plague Surgeon, should have been plus one disgusting resilient, 
not re roll one. I think the difference on math wise when usually it's about 33% success rate when you have five and sixes. If you brought it to plus one, it's obviously a 50%. And reroll ones actually brings up to 38, only adds in about 5% extra. Which, if you're going to have a character that is offering a buff like that, it should be more than 3%, uh, 5%. You know, bringing it to plus one would be ideal. Maybe reroll all failed ones, but that might bring it above the plus one, but I could be wrong on that one. Uh, I just think that it is supposed to be about survivability. Make it more, you know, at the moment it's a bit lacklustre. Noxious Blightbringer, ah, try again. Morale didn't really work in 8th, so try again. Uh, Tallyman, interesting possibility to get Command's Point back. Maybe a little bit expensive for this, you know, a bit of a reduction, might be good. 8th uh, edition, due to, you know, it might bring it back because 9th edition is going to have lots of Command Points, hopefully, or at least an even amount of Command Points, so maybe we'll see this in a bit more use. Hellbrew, without discussing the Resilient, give it discussing Resilient. But with heavy weapons, not bad. However, 9th edition, that's pretty much out the window. Possessed don't have the bonuses like other Chaos can give them, especially with Faith and Fury. I really don't like them being here. I sort of get it, I can accept it, but... I feel there should be a Plague Marine Possessed or something. Maybe it's more about survivability, I don't know. Beast of uh, Nurgle, straight back into the Demon, Demon Codex you go. Terminators, now, an interesting one here. Death Shroud seems strong and can hit hard, you know, I think they're strength 8, oh, it's really good. However, the problem is they're just so slow. They need to be a bit tougher to justify them, I think. Maybe like Paladins, where they're going to be 3 wounds. After all, I think they got a mighty point reduction to try and justify them a wee bit. Black Lord Terminators, again, all the options, and actually they're, some of them are actually not bad. I really wish they were 3 wounds, slow, you know, slow resilience, but they can lay down a lot of hurt. They also come really expensive, like, even towards the end of it, they were still very expensive. Still wish Leader could take Flail of Corruption? Come on, give us Leaders having Flail of Corruptions, you know you want to Games Workshop, I know you haven't really made the models to do that, but it'd be really good, you know, oh, that would be excellent. Overall, actually a fine section, but some of these units do need to be a little bit updated. Uh, fast Attack, only four in this section. Uh, but there's some actually really good options here, and that's the funny thing, when I often think of fast attack armies, uh, sometimes their selections are not so ideal. In armies I don't think fast attack, they're actually pretty good. Example of that is of course Death Guard, I think Admech is actually not bad, you know, I think they only had two, but the Stone Dragoons were great. Not looking like that in 9th edition, and there's one I've done already in terms of reviews that I can't remember, but I definitely made the same point. Necrons, Necrons, their fast attack is actually surprisingly good. So, play drones, back to the Demon Codex you go. Chaos Spawn, if you have fear points in, fine, but they're kind of squishy. They could do with Disgusting Resilient as well. Mifrit Blight Hauler, I actually like these bad boys. I do have a few of them and not actually used them yet. Uh, but ignoring the heavy rule and plus one tip when there's three is actually not bad. The adding cover to infantry seems a bit of a waste because they're going to like zoom ahead of infantry, so. Seems like a really, really odd one. Uh, I think that needs to be a bit of rethought because, let's face it, Play Marines and Pox Walkers are not keeping up with these guys. Floated Boat Drone, they were a mainstay in 8th edition. Solid unit, the Plague Spitter, threw out shot, put out shots very reliably against infantry. Uh, and generally quite a powerful unit, fall back and just spray again. Going into 9th, they have been hurt a bit. Uh, even with Fly, they cannot fall back and fire, which hurts them a lot. And then Overwatch being a stratagem hurts even more. I hope Flame of Weapons can Overwatch without spending Command Point, but we shall see. You know, otherwise Flamers are going to be actually quite difficult to justify, I feel. I don't feel that's going to happen, but I think it should happen, that maybe if you've got the Flamer, you know, auto-hit stuff, then you should be able to Overwatch automatically. Uh, disagree with me on that one, how you think, but I think that's the main way you should be able to justify Flamers. At least they'll be able to flame in combat uh, now, so you don't need to fall back and flame, it just means that you're going to have to flame the unit you're against, which offers less uh, options to them, which is not ideal. As long as they don't have the blast, you know, I don't think they've got blast or flamers, then they're kind of okay. Uh, also, Fleshmore can actually be amazing, just, you know, we need access to Forge, and then this thing would blend like there's no tomorrow, that'd be really, really nice. 
Uh, Chaos, uh, sorry, Heavy Sport, Chaos Land Raider, it was Tragic in 8th edition. Transport Tax being evidence, hell, I once had a Cultist unit, Charge Chaos, uh, uh, I think it was World Eaters Chaos, uh, Chaos Land Raider, and I just couldn't shake them, they just kept charging, 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 I couldn't put units in to stop those Cultists, they had to go in somewhere else. So, poor iconic unit, you know, being beat by cultists essentially, not ideal, but uh, yeah, Chaos Land Raider. The Filer really needs Disgusting Resilient and other buffs, it's a jack of all trades, master of none, which hurts because you know, I love a good Defiler. I hope now in 9th edition it may see a bit more action because the vehicle can move about and fire without suffering the minus one, maybe, uh, maybe to the part it might see more action. Chaos Predators are at least the kill shot, but Predators have suffered in this edition time and time again. Disgust Resign would be a start. Uh, maybe with 9th edition, again, you can move forward and fire and it's not really taxing. Uh, but, you know, Death Guard do need that support for long range and this is sort of the answer to it. Playburst Crawler are now worth talking. Uh, I really wish this was not a demon, but of all the demon engines, this is the one I don't mind as much because it doesn't look like a demon as such. I do enjoy uh, that, you know, but it, I do enjoy, but it does come with a few costs. I think the Plague Spare variant, running about the field and bullying the units, which it did quite well in 8th, is kind of possibly over to a degree. Overwatch hurts, you know, it won't be able to do that, uh, or it can be across the command point, but still being able to spray in combat does help, I guess. Honestly, its ability in 8th to move up the field, bully its way to points, and damn hard kill is great. You know, if you're going ranged, uh, then you're going to need a Chaos Lord. You might actually find these still being popular because, again, you can build up the field and get points and then just be really tough to get off them. So you might still see these quite often, but I think that the way they were used before is not as reliable. Flyers? Nope, thank goodness, because I'm not the biggest fan of Heldrakes. I would love a Fire Raptor gunship. Oh, you know, that would be good, but the points are expensive. Uh, fortification, nope, and uh, it's a real shame as well because some kind of hunkering thing for Death Guard would be really, really cool. And of course, the Lord of War is uh, Mortarian. I can accept that. I think that's okay. So final notes on this: plenty of support characters need, you know, things need a bit of a rework and just to give them a bit more edge. Maybe a vehicle that is crewed by Death Guard, not demons. But then again, I'm biased on that one. Plague Marines or in general all infantry just need to be pushed up one wound. Mortar make him a lot tougher to nook because at the moment it's, it's, it's kind of too easy in some regards. Maybe give him the gas ability where you know can only lose so many wounds per phase, that would be a great help. And recover wounds maybe, but I think that might be a bit too much to ask. So how would I solve a few things like this? I think Thousand Suns was actually a cooler, easier, maybe more expensive option, uh, which I'll mention there retrospective. So first and foremost, I hate this because again I said don't have demon and marines. However, the new obliterators seem like an easy win for death guards. They're mostly disgusting in a sort of way, more muscle and stuff rather than you know all their sort of plaguey stuff. But it seems like an easy win to get a ranged unit. Secondly, give death guard back heavy weapons. Why give them a trade that benefits them when it only really affects you know the hellbrute and like one blight lord? I get Death Guard are slow and in the advance, and I'm sure, you know, as well, they do like to hunker down. You know, they hunker down and fire away, but they do like to advance. I get it, I get it, I get it. But Plague Marines Havocs would be beautiful. Now, when I actually started, I think just before 8th edition, I actually, and I knew there was going to be Death Guards, I think to a degree, I actually got a bunch of the Death Guard from Forge Worlds. I don't think they sell them anymore. And then some of the Forge World weapons, I was like going to put on missiles on them and stuff. I was like, oh, that's going to be nice. Uh, I think I was also getting ready for the Chaos Space Marine, because you could do that in the previous Chaos Space Marine Codex. You could have uh, your Havocs with Mark of Nurgle, and Sarah would be a de facto Death Guard army. I think you had the Trail Legion ones. I was like, oh, they're going to be really, really good with uh, heavy weapons. And then they didn't have them. And that was painful. You don't get missile launchers last scans on Plague Marines. And that seems very odd. The new Havoc models are great. Make them so Death Guard could have them. I know it requires people to convert them, but I'd love it. It would look cool. Please make it happen. Uh, I know that's not as many, you know, answers to Death Guard problem. I'm open to your own suggestions. But yeah, they certainly need a bit more units because some of the stuff they do, the variety is just not quite there.
and obviously they are suffering from first codex problems. So that's it, uh, kind of for Death Guard. Now, Death Guard are one that's close to my heart. Actually, every time we play the start of the channel, I should mention the start, uh, when we start to the channel, we did Death Guard and Grey Knights. When 8th edition came out, we did Death Guard and Grey Knights. When 9th edition came out, uh, we did Death Guard and Grey Knights. We always play Death Guard, but I just feel there's something lacking with Death Guard. They did get a lot, but a lot of characters doesn't equal a big army. So I just feel there needs to be a little bit more to it, and uh, yeah, there's certainly potential, but we're just going to see what can be done in that one. I know there was a hint to new Death Guard stuff. Uh, I saw in the sort of one of the videos that have gone around recently, it showed like, I believe a Dark Elder weapon, Death Guard weapon, Orc weapon, Admech stuff. So there is potential for the future. What it is, I do not know. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think of Death Guards. They are one that's close to my heart. Uh, I used to also have Death Guard Bikers, uh, which played a lot in 7th edition. They were Toughness 6, it was great. I think they're Tough 6. And now they are just packed away and I haven't seen them for three years. Uh, it just hurts a lot. So I'd love to hear what people's views are on Death Guards because similarly I'm a huge fan of them. Check us out on social media, you can see upcoming projects. I started painting some Astro Metam, I started them in April, put them away, started again. Painted the tank recently, I'm really proud of it. So I'm going to paint it a lot more because I was really, really happy with it and I needed a break from Admech. Uh, and also check us out on Patreon where you can help support the channel, bring you more content because we absolutely love doing so. So thanks again and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Reports.